Today we're finally going to be taking a look at the Saramonic UW Mic 9 system. And I say finally because I've received many requests from you guys to cover it, and I've actually had this system for about seven months now. I've just been taking my time with it and really exploring its strengths and weaknesses, because I know for many of you it's your number one pick for best value wireless system, and I can see why. Let's get undone. What's happening everybody? I'm Gerald Undone and I'm Ron Burgundy. So I've been testing more than just the basic body pack and transmitter. I've also got the XLR transmitter, the XLR receiver, as well as the dual channel kit. And this is probably my favorite thing about this system. All of these items are very well priced and can be acquired individually and can be mixed and matched to suit your needs. And they all have two channel capability. So you could run a simple one channel body pack or you could add an XLR transmitter and send both mics to the same receiver, which can separate the mic channels in a stereo left and right to make it better for mixing levels later on. In fact, that's what I'm doing right now. I have my Samson CO2 transmitting wirelessly along with this lav to a receiver plugged into my Zoom F6, and I can mix these mics together to add a bit more body to your typical lav mic sound, since I don't usually sound too great on lav mics. But for a sample, here's what just the Samson CO2 sounds like transmitted wirelessly. Gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves, and so imparts the highest photon energy. And here's what the lab sounds like. Gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves, and so imparts the highest photon energy. Now the only drawback to this is that I have noticed the faintest amount of channel bleed on the system. It's not a lot and can easily be hidden in post, but it is there. To capture this, I had one transmitter recording some music in a different soundproof location from where I was wearing the second transmitter, and you can hear a little bit of the music, about two to three dB worth, in the quiet parts of my transmission. You have to really crank up the volume to hear it, but it's there. Bonus points if you can make out the song that was bleeding through. Leave your guesses in the comments. Now you can also receive two channels on the XLR receiver, but keep in mind that XLR is mono, so your two channels will be down mixed together on that particular receiver. But even more useful is the fact that you can also use multiple receivers in a single configuration. So let's say that you had the two channel body pack kit and you put a transmitter on each of your two subjects and then sent that to the included receiver, which was fed into your camera. You could get another receiver, maybe the XLR version, and connect it to a separate recorder with XLR inputs, and both receivers would get the same audio feed simultaneously from your talent. So that customization and interchangeability is something I really appreciate about the system, and considering that the components of the system are much cheaper than the competition, you can build out a pretty versatile kit for less money than some of the competition's one-channel packages. And all of the receivers come with headphone jacks as well, so you can monitor your audio even if your camera doesn't have a headphone port. And the build quality of the components is also very good, regardless of the receiver or transmitter chosen, they're all metal and have nice rugged exteriors. There is one piece on them, however, which is not very rugged, and that's the battery tray on the original kit. Now, these you need to be a little bit careful with as they're made of pretty flimsy plastic. Now, I haven't had any issues with mine, but I've read reviews online where they broke for people, and I could totally see that happening if you're not careful. The newer devices, though, like the XLR receiver, for example, have addressed this by using a metal door instead of a plastic tray. Now, speaking of batteries, I know that some of you will probably appreciate that you can swap out AA batteries on these components because when I reviewed the DD Connect system, some of you expressed concern about having built-in lithium batteries. So if you're in that camp, you'll be pleased with this power solution. However, in those same reviews online, I've read some complaints that AA batteries don't last long enough, but I haven't found this to be true at all. I think it's possible that those individuals might have been using cheap alkaline batteries because I've been using Eneloop rechargeables and I get over 12 hours of runtime with a full charge on the transmitters and over seven hours on the receiver and that was with both channels running and the transmitters set to high. So I have no complaints about power, but I would recommend picking up a couple packs of Eneloops for them, so you might want to factor that into the price. The included accessories are complete and enough to get everything going right out of the box, and the setup is nice and easy. It does take a second to get used to navigating the menus, but once you do, it's pretty intuitive. The only grievance I have is that after the menu times out, it defaults back to the first page instead of resuming where you left off, which can waste a bit of time during the initial setup. Now this is a UHF system that operates from 514 to 596 megahertz, with 96 channels to choose from in that spread. But it does have an auto scan feature that'll suggest the best channel to you, and it's recommended that you use that when setting this up in a new location or starting a new recording session. Now I tested the range on these both indoors and outdoors and got satisfactory results. The advertised range is 100 meters, but keep in mind that the 500 megahertz spectrum might produce different results where you're shooting compared to me. I also found the range to differ significantly depending on which channel 
channel you choose. For example, when shooting outside in the open air, the higher channels with frequencies closer to 600 megahertz produced much better results and achieved well beyond 100 meters, where the lower frequencies had mostly dropped out by 100 meters and had intermittent cutouts along the way. 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. Gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. 70, 71, 72, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80. Penetrating electromagnetic radiation, radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves and so imparts the highest photon energy arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves and so imparts the highest photon energy. The audio quality does suffer the further you get, but when using higher frequencies, I had no issues reaching the advertised range with acceptable clarity. Indoors, however, I was really impressed. I was able to leave my apartment, go all the way down the hall and into the stairwell and still get clear audio. Now I'm in the stairwell. And this is pretty far from the camera, and there's so many walls between that it would make no sense that this would even work. So that must have put at least five or six walls, half of them concrete between me and the receiver, plus whatever interference generating devices would be located in the different apartments, and I had no problems. Now audio quality is one that's tough to gauge because it's a bit subjective and again I sound terrible on lav mics but I found the noise floor to be in the minus 65 to minus 70 dB range in my studio when using the normalized to minus 23 LUFS which is pretty solid and great for the price. And here's a sound sample comparing the fidelity of my Samson CO2 hardwired versus transmitted over the Saramonic system. Judge that for yourself. Gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. Gamma radiation is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. My take is that the noise was only about 3 to 4 dB worse on the wireless and the clarity was perfectly acceptable in my opinion. The only thing that stood out to me was the lack of warmth that often happens when wirelessly transmitting mics that I'm used to hearing wired it gives it a touch of that telephone effect. But again, I think you're getting acceptable quality for the money because really that's what this all comes down to. You can't beat the price. You can get this two channel system for $400 and then you can add other components like additional receivers and transmitters for only $150 more. So value wise, I totally see why you guys have been recommending this system. It's a great starter kit option. There's definitely better systems out there, but they start at almost double the price. So if you're on a tight budget or you're just starting out, while it's not the best wireless system available, it might just offer the best value. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining, or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, then it might be time to change out your batteries. Alright, I'm done.